Let's now settle for the details. The Institute of Economic Affairs is calling for the scaling down of the number of ministers from 84 to 40. According to its director of research, Dr. John Kwache, the current number of ministers have not had any positive impact on governance, but rather burdened the taxpayer. He therefore wants the 2023 budget to merge some of the ministries to ease the burden on capital expenditure. Dr. John Kwache spoke at a pre-budget media engagement in Accra. Eh? We need just 12 ministries. Hmm? And I've done me, I've merged them, you know, and I said, we need 12 ministries. Hmm? And, and this should be manned by 24 ministers, sector ministers. That is each ministry and the, other, and the deputy. Okay? And then you add 16 regional ministers and I'm prepared to give them 40, 40 sector ministers and regional ministers in total. That's what we need. Look, these things I'm talking about, I'm not saying that the, the budget, I expect the budget to announce them. <laughs> That's what, but I'm saying that, you know, the budget is about, it talks about everything in this economy, or policies, you know, the budget is somehow responsible. So I'm saying that these are things that need to be taken into consideration, whether in this budget or subsequent ones, well, that's, an, that, that's an, another issue. But what I'm saying is that we need just 14 minutes, minutes and not uh, This will require the merger of ministries. Typically, we should not have separate ministries for roads and highways, transport, and railway development. What is that? A while longer on the budget, and the Ghana Mine Workers Union says the government must increase its stake in the mining companies and create an enabling environment for the active participation of indigenous companies. The union says the industry is dominated by foreigners with over 99% ownership. General Secretary of the Union, Abdul Mumin Bana, shared the union's expectations ahead of the 2023 budget presentation. It's important that we find measures to uh, resuscitate it and reposition it on the path of growth uh, to the benefit of all of us. And to do that, I believe that the extractive sector, like all the other key productive sectors of this economy, ought to contribute a little more. They need to demonstrate a lot of empathy and a lot of compassion to the Ghanaian people and by extension to the Ghanaian economy. And so uh, as a union, we believe that I mean, an economic recovery, you know, levy or a tax of reform to support the current ailing position of the Ghanaian economy won't be uh, a bad option at all. And it's important that uh, captains of, of these mining companies are also, you know, very patriotic and, and, uh, and, and, and Ghanaian centered because at the end of the day, the resources belong to the people of Ghana, the revenue that we're generating obviously should belong to the people of Ghana, unfortunately, because of FDI. But we find ourselves in very critical times where we need to uh, ask these mining companies and all other companies in the extractive sector and all other key productive sectors like the telecoms. They need to contribute more to the recovery process. And so that is one area that I look forward to. Uh, beyond that, we all know that um, our public service colleagues and Ghanaian workers in general, because of um, uh, the skyrocketing nature of the current inflation and the inflationary pressures in the economy, uh, salaries, unfortunately, of Ghanaian workers can no longer take them home. What we're saying is that we must see government demonstrate something a little more than they have always done to ensure that at least, if for nothing at all, we're able to cushion workers uh, over and above inflation, so that at least every Ghanaian worker uh, should be able to go to the market and to be able to, to make ends meet. Now, the telecommunications companies in the country have begun blocking SIM cards of mobile subscribers yet to register their SIM cards. The exercise is in compliance with a recent directive from the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization. The telcos are Airtel Tigo, MTN and Vodafone. The following report has more. Statement from the Ghana Chamber of Telecommunications recalled that on November 11, 2022, 
The ministry announced some measures to be implemented by operators. Since the 20th of November 2022, members of the chamber have been blocking data services for all subscribers who have only completed stage one, which is the linkage to Ghana card, but not stage two, which is the biometric capture of the SIM registration process as directed by the ministry. The Telcos chamber said it is encouraging all subscribers who have acquired Ghana cards but are yet to complete stage two to do so before November 30th, 2022. According to the chamber, the telcos are obliged by the directive to completely deactivate all subscriber SIMs which have not completed the biometric capture registration step by the set date. The statement, however, pointed out that customers of the networks are not barred from using voice, data, USSD, mobile money services, and access to emergency services, among others. Now, the Bank of Ghana has withdrawn the license of Credit Reference Bureau Hudson Price Data Solution. The regulator in a letter has directed banks and other financial institutions to stop sending data on their clients um, and credit history to the firm. But what has necessitated this move by the Bank of Ghana? My colleague George Yaffe has more. The Bank of Ghana in the letter that was asking these institutions to stop sending data to Hudson Price noted that the action was influenced by persistence, non-compliance of the Credit Reference Bureau Act. The central bank in the letter seen by Joy Business directed Hudson Price to immediately cease operations that is on November 21, 2022. That was yesterday. The central bank in the letter was asking all those that had contracts and subscribed to Hudson Price to move to another credit reference bureau in the country not later than December 10, 2022. It is not clear for now the specific breach in the Credit Reference Bureau Act that forced the Bank of Ghana to take this action against Hudson Price. But it's also say the central bank wanted to take measures to protect the financial space. The action by the central bank means that we now have only two credit reference bureaus in the country, that is XDS Data and Dan and Bradstreet. Some of these institutions had in the past complained about how they had struggled in getting the commercial banks to comply with the Credit Reference Bureau when it comes to submitting of data covering their clients in terms of those that are in good financial standing. A while longer with the banking sector and the withdrawal of foreign exchange for the import of non-essential commodities including rice could constrain foreign exchange liquidity particularly dollars and western its demand supply now that's the assertion by data research and other many research institutions the following report has more Bank of ghana announced the withdrawal of foreign exchange support for the import of what the government classifies as non-essential commodities they included rice poultry cooking oil among others though analysts welcome the initiative as the government strives to preserve its dollar reserves, they believe the move could constrain foreign exchange liquidity. Against this backdrop, they anticipate the depreciation of the local unit to intensify in the retail market while seeing gentle movement in the interbank market this week. The city closed weaker last week, depreciating by 1.69% to the dollar. It also lost 3.54 and 4.01% to the pound and the euro, respectively. Now, the Ghana Statistical Service says traders are engaged in profiteering, resulting in massive price hikes. Traders have been blamed for high prices on the cost of cutting goods um, to urban centers amid four price hikes. However, there are concerns traders are unduly taking advantage of the situation. John Foster Ajaho is head of price statistics unit at the Ghana Statistical Service. He even mentioned that his speech people don't understand. What is said, people are profiteering. Right. So you see the same product, you got it 26 or somewhere, mm. another person is selling it at 30 something. Yeah. Same product. Yeah. Why well, you know the same supplier who is giving to them? Why would he sell it to someone, someone, someone may tell you it is the stock. Maybe this person bought it, it's been there for maybe a month, and this person just got stock, let's say, a few days ago, and the price changes have affected them. Well, that could be true. I remember I, I, I bought a certain drug for about 300 CDs just recently 
And I, I felt, whoa. I went to another place. It was less than 200. Right. But within a short while, I went to that place where it was less than 200. The price has changed. And now they had got new stock. And I think there it was even 400 okay. seats. So you see, th th these are the that, things that, that unsettle that I, people. I agree. Because, I mean, if indeed you had an old stock and you haven't gone to the market to see what has changed, yeah. you still be selling at that low price. Yeah. Only when you go to the market that you realize things have gone up, you mm. can increase that. I agree with you. But certainly we cannot agree with the fact that People are also playing around the situation we find ourselves in and are arbitrarily increasing prices. I mean, we have a lot of examples to share. And I think this is what we all have to, you know, be patriotic and help all of us get out of the situation. Because if you think about the money, the profit we make, you know, COVID time, this is start from the COVID time. When people started increasing prices. Right. Because right. we're in a difficult Even a common face mask. Common face mask. You know, it went right. up to 50 to this. And that has stayed on up to nine. That's what we are fixing. You're still watching Prime Business here with me, Pius Kujubaka. Now, some stakeholders within Ghana's housing industry are calling for a robust private-public partnership to solve Ghana's housing deficit, according to the Managing Director for Switchback Developers Limited, Rudy Loko. Government should implement policies that are driven by development within the sector. Speaking to Joy Business at the commissioning of Dinkra Height, he said, bridging the housing gap will require more investment. According to Rudy Loco, a Dinkra Height is an apartment that will contribute to solving the country's housing problems. He maintained that there's the need to draw in more investors within the sector for expansion. There's a bit of a glut and um, our economic situation currently is a bit tight. So not to say people don't have money, but I think people are just being cautious and want to see how things play out in the next six months to a year but honestly it's always the safest place to invest um, what we are experiencing today in terms of inflation if you put your money in real estate you your 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 <laughs> your wealth would not devalue vis-a-vis -vis if you had put the money somewhere else like in an in an investment i mean today we are all talking about haircuts there's no haircut in real estate. I think it will help. It will go a long way to even help on the pricing of properties. There are real estate companies that sometimes have to pay for land two, three times before they actually start construction. And there's no free lunch. They are not Father Christmases. They would definitely pass on those costs to the final consumer or the buyer. Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Tremantin at the event, reiterated government commitment to supporting the sector. We are all aware that the real estate space in Ghana is dominated by private developers and private investments. But I think that for such iconic projects, it is appropriate for us to have government establish an interest in projects of this nature. And it's against this background that I'd like to commend Nate for joining with the private sector in developing this initiative. Secondly is the strategic location of this particular development. All the value of any real estate development lies in its location. And that's why earlier speakers are describing this in superlative terms about being the, the address in town, the prime location, um, accessibility, so on and so forth. The structure provides grade A residential space designed to be one of Ghana's iconic mixed use properties and exhibiting a beautiful landscape. Now, the Ghana Startup Network is making a passionate appeal to government to initiate deliberate measures aimed at developing and supporting startups across the country. Executive Director of Ghana Startup Network, Solomon Ejay, made this call at the sixth edition of the Young Entrepreneurs Award in Accra. There's more in the following reports.
In all, 65 startups were awarded at this year's Young Entrepreneurship Awards. Out of this, 11 received the topmost awards, with the remainder getting certificates of honor. According to the Executive Director of the Ghana Startup Network, Solomon Ejei, this is to empower and motivate them to do more in their various fields of endeavors to sustain their businesses. Speaking to Joy Business at the sixth edition of the Young Entrepreneurship Awards, Solomon Eje called on government to initiate deliberate measures aimed at developing startups across the country. Very, I mean, I think that Ghana needs to be deliberate when it comes to startup development. Where are the funding that is going to startup development? Again, if, if, if your child needs an orange and you give the child banana, for instance, yeah, well, of course, it can quench the, 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 the hunger somehow, but it is not what the child wanted. So talking about funding, what funds are available that support business creation and you know, sustainability? Are there funds that you can tap in? Other judicians, you have funding for ideation stage. You have funding for testing stage, where you just manage to test your ideas to see whether it will succeed or not. It, it's there. But in Ghana here, even when you are scaling up, it's an issue. So access to finance is key, access to market is key, policies that will enable you to win your print is key. This is one thing I think that the government, I think governments need to pay attention to to support the young people. Chief Executive Officer of Midpoint Pharmacy Limited, Eliphas Kwabina Ajiman, who was adjudged the Young Entrepreneur of the Year, took the opportunity to encourage upcoming young entrepreneurs to stay steadfast to improving their business despite the unending financial challenges in the sector. Yes, I'm in the pharmaceutical field. If I am to tell you how I started, you're going to be baffled. I didn't get any capital, but I had to do it. So everyone uh, out there who has an idea, implement it. Take a step. There is an adage in Akan that says, If you take the step, automatically there are going to be people to assist you. If you keep it to yourself, and you go to someone to assist you, what is a person going to base on to assist you? First, make a move and you're going to be there. The Young Entrepreneurship Awards is a yearly event which seeks to recognize and celebrate young startups excelling in their respective field of work. The U.S. has said Ghana's sustainable economic growth will be based on a concerted effort by the government and the business community. Speaking on behalf of the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Commercial Chief at the U.S. Embassy, Dean Matalak, called on the government to listen to members of the business community and factor their concerns to draw in more investors. He was speaking at the 2022 Thanksgiving Cocktail and Awards Night of the American Chamber of Commerce, Ghana. The government was asked to be prudent in planning its fiscal policies ahead to help send positive signals to the IMF and the investors. Dean Matlack entreated the business community to devise strategy in supporting Gavin's quest for economic stability. Here at home, we are also thankful for the tremendous work the business community is doing in Ghana despite the economic headwinds. The awards tonight celebrate much of this work. As exemplary corporate citizens, you donated and delivered critical medical supplies during the pandemic. You promoted sustainability and renewable energy in your own operations and lead on the transition to clean energy. You built schools and sponsor STEM training for Ghana's youth, to name a few initiatives. In doing so, you create pathways for self-reliance in communities across Ghana, improving their quality of life and their prospects for the future. The AmCham remains a leader and partner with the embassy and the government of Ghana we want to deepen our work with you to both improve the business environment and help Ghana address its structural challenges. You are not just investors in Ghana. You are invested in Ghana's future success. And that is why we must ask more of you. Your efforts are essential for Ghana's resilience and its economic recovery. On her part, 
president for the American Chamber of Commerce Ghana, Aisha Bedue Ibe, entreated members to work to deepen the relationship between both countries. So I think every year is special. Remember that we are celebrating Thanksgiving, which is a big holiday in the US. It's an opportunity to give thanks for all that we have. And I think, like I said, every year is unique because we are always picking up on something unique and special for that year. This year, we're also using the opportunity to welcome the new US ambassador who has been in town just for six months. So we also use this as an opportunity to welcome her to Ghana as well and celebrate her presence. So the chamber supports members by doing advocacy for them with the government being their voice to the economy, also giving feedback both ways between the businesses themselves and also the government as well. So it's basically a chamber that acts as an intermediary that supports business and growth and also promotes Ghanaian businesses to the US and vice versa. Well, the chamber promises to do bigger events, support its members more, expect to see a lot more US companies coming into Ghana, I expect to see Ghanaian companies being encouraged to go and invest in the US, which I think is something different. I'd like to just hear more from us in a positive note to promote trade between our two countries. The cocktail and awards night was to appreciate members of the chamber for their support. And that's it for Prime Business with me, Pios Kojo Baka. For more news, do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Thanks so much for doing the watching. Do enjoy the rest of the programs.